good afternoon everybody uh, thank you idsa for uh, facilitate, facilitating my participation here sorry yeah uh, my starting point would be uh, the recognition that we have a new india and new gulf during the last 15 years and both will be different again over the next decade assuming that the indian economy grows at the rate that it is tipped to or the gulf economy struggle and contract due to low oil prices as is imminent india is now yeah india is now recognized for uh, not just what it is but for what it could become there's a famous quote uh, from one of the ministers in the past says in the past india had been called a cage tiger a lumbering elephant and various other exotic animals in the zoo today it has moved out of the zoo and on to the race course a super poor country wanting to become a superpower is what india is in the making this is a sentiment that's striking a chord in the gulf region similarly the gulf has moved from being countries adhering to what was called the ibm culture which is an acronym for three arabic words inshallah bukra malish essentially you take any project to any of the gulf countries they would say we'll see you tomorrow god willing and when you go on the third day it would invariably be sorry inshallah bukra malish but now it's a kind of maggie culture everything is done in 2 minutes so that's the kind of spirit of possibility that has driven the region to what it has achieved now and it is the same spirit with which they are with which they have encouraged economic diversification and this is perhaps going to hold them in better stead now at this difficult time rather than having to suffer if they didn't have economic diversification during low oil era in this context what does strategic ties mean both in the context of india gulf relations and in the context context of gulf security itself my endeavor would be to try and establish a link between the two i don't know what international theory say about strategic ties but i will put forward some thoughts from the india gulf developments during the last 15 years that could be construed as strategic i will also stick my neck out and identify some developments that may become a part of the india gulf relationship during the next few decades especially in the context of gulf security first economic engagement that could be construed as strategic following 9/11 the gcc countries adopted a look east policy which included india the saudi kings visit to india in 2006 formalized the strategic outlook the fact that india gulf economic partnership today is worth 200 billion dollars is the outcome of this strategic engagement further in putting aside religious ideology and dealing with india on the same level as it did with pakistan the gcc conveyed that economic sense is common sense politically setting the record straight after 2000 that kashmir was a bilateral issue and recognizing india's demand that it did not require third party mediation as well as giving india the same terms as pakistan in the framework agreement on economic cooperation in 2004 were strategic as well third in the security realm the riyadh declaration of 2010 and the abu dhabi declaration of 2015 strategically elevated the partnership to the next comprehensive strategic level the real impact of these in terms of hard security may take a while to evolve but in terms of soft security we have seen increased cooperation between india and uae and india and saudi arabia in counter terrorism efforts modi statements in the uae alluding to pakistan state sponsored terrorism and 2611 mumbai terror attack conspirators extradition from saudi arabia serve as examples 
There is also the India-Qatar Defence Cooperation Pact of 2008, described as an agreement just short of stationing Indian troops in Qatar that serves as a good example. India and Oman also agreed to enhance their defence ties in 2008. I've just interspersed this with some cartoons uh, and just to encapsulate what I just said, this is what it is. The Indian economy is booming uh, at a time when the rest are not doing as well. That's one of the reasons for the look east policy. You have a new sense of bonhomie with, in which they agree on several issues. This is what is the look east policy all about. And we were talking this morning about the number of uh, the connectivity, the airline connectivity. Some say 700, some take it up to 900. That means about 125 flights a day. And that's making the Arabs ride on the Indian peacock. And here's a bit of the new Arabian night. So far, so good. What next? In future, strategic economic engagement may manifest, for example, in how the proposed $75 billion India-UAE investment fund is operationalized. Again, for example, investment in the food storage sector could be linked to infrastructure projects, as opposed to the GCC country's idea of buying cultivable agricultural land to ensure food security. This would prove to be a win-win strategic economic engagement. With low oil prices, there could be efforts to build a strategic oil reserve as well. Next, strategic economic engagement would enhance the strategic component of political ties. Modi visited the UAE 34 years after the last Indian Prime Minister visited there, and it is likely that there would be a reciprocal visit by the UAE leadership to India next month. That it is happening in a space of six months is of strategic political value. This is likely to be followed up with Modi's visits to Saudi Arabia too during 2016. In fact, it was originally scheduled for August 2015, but didn't materialize because of clash with the Saudi leadership's schedules. Before moving on to speculate what the strategic component of India Gulf ties will be in the security domain in future, it is vital to look at the reigning state of affairs with Gulf security. Over the last decade, the security debate in the Gulf has revolved around two points of view. One, less international involvement in the region's affairs. Two, more internationalization of the region. Since the dominant view favors the second option, there have been calls for exploring the idea of incorporating several new international actors who could act as security guarantors of any future regional security arrangement. Some Gulf leaders have issued statements in support of this idea. Owing to the failure of the United States, which has been referred to as a super broke, super frugal superpower in the region, and the shift in the economic power center from west to east, the region is building ties with a host of alternatives, particularly in Asia. Thus, rather than put all eggs in one basket, this omni balancing means the region's ties with the United States are no longer exclusive. It is in this context of Gulf-Asia ties that Asian scholars have been pushing the idea of intensifying the Gulf-Asia and Gulf-India strategic ties at both Track 2 and Track 1.5 levels. It is still early days, but the attempt is to build on the present conducive economic and political bonhomie to chart out a strategic security dimension to that relationship. This primarily involves exploring possibilities for a new collective security architecture, which would involve regional, Asian, and Western powers, including the United States. The point is that India and other principal Asian players will have to stop riding piggyback on US naval presence in the region's waters at some point and start finding their own means of securing their sea lanes Assuming that the U.S. engagement in the region will continue to progressively diminish in the decades ahead, this opens interesting possibilities by diversifying the number of security players catering to the region's security and stability.
again. Just some slides to break the monotony. <laughs> no, very clearly. That's why it's in black and white. Oil. <laughs> What are the hindrances? First, rabid Saudi-Iran animosity. This is a major deterrent. Two, lack of Asian consensus, especially India-Pakistan rivalry, India-China competition, Japan and South Korea's reluctance to work with China. Three, lack of a clear blueprint in terms of Indian and Chinese willingness and plan of action to play a role in the region. Should it be, the debate is always, should it be soft power, hard power, smart power? I just heard a new statement, hard power with soft touch. <laughs> are the Gulf countries ready to explore alternatives? Yes, they are. Statements by several Gulf leaders during the last 15 years points to this consideration. But the fear of Iran and the lack of credible alternatives makes them stick to a wobbling power in the US. What is the future course like? Despite the present Saudi-Iran feud, which I believe is a storm before the calm, the two could finally come to terms with Iran West rapprochement. There is also the outside chance that the GCC Iran ties could be mended. If this is if this were to happen, India would have a lot less of strategic worries. After all, India is among a few countries in the world that has commensurate ties with both. So my first thought about how India Gulf strategic engagement in the security realm could play out is if there is no Saudi-Iran or GCC-Iran rapprochement in the near future, India needs to take that big strategic call about serving as some sort of an interlocutor. This is not a military step, but it is a strategic step. It is surprising that by mediating in the Saudi-Iran row, a trust deficit Pakistan has waded into waters that India at this point doesn't even want to touch with a barge pole. Second, India should begin diplomatic talks with principal Asian players about charting a course for Gulf security, which is in everybody's interest and is everybody's concern as well. Three, it should also begin back-channel talks with countries like Oman and Qatar, which are more amenable to a thaw in GCC-Iran tension than the others. I know Professor Ghanimal Najar is sitting here and I've been reading a lot about how perhaps Kuwait also could play that role. Maybe Kuwait could also be one of the countries that India begins to talk to. After all, Gulf security should have GCC input, without which the GCC would state the same accusation that they put forward when they were left out of the Iran-West nuclear talks. Four, similar and simultaneous talks should also be initiated with Iran. While it is carrying out these soft initiatives, India should take a few other smart initiatives. One, look beyond anti-piracy, disaster management, anti-extremism, and anti-terror cooperation. Two, contemplate more defense pacts of the kind we have had with Qatar. Three, have joined naval exercises with other GCC countries like it has with Oman. This will help showcase India's naval strength and plausible effectiveness. Yes, many of you will see these as steps beyond our comfort zone, as unnecessary when the going has been good as a free rider. And I emphasize free rider. But the days of being a free, di re free rider are not eternal. Moreover, there may come a time when the GCC countries will begin to play up the economic security linkage and demand a quid pro quo arrangement. In responding to these demands, which may mean not just addressing threats from state actors, but also from non-state actors like the ISIS, India is not just addressing Gulf security dynamics, but its own strategic necessities too, which is crucial in a post-US multipolar world. So let's make the best of this match made in heaven.
Thank you.